Hey guys and welcome back. I believe this is where we left off last time in No One But You. With the whole Megami having uh, something bad happen to her by Mr. Kitsuna or something. Over the days since Megafer Megami first encountered with first Megami's first encounter with Mr. Kitsuna, life passed by in an in a miserable fashion of, of in as miserable a fashion as I'd feared. With our class class polarized by our new homeroom teacher, tensions were usually high, causing everyone without fail, without exception, to feel on edge. She remained absent, Yui started skipping class more than ever, and Ryo spent an inordinate amount of time outside the principal's office. We all felt like hostility, concern, and jealousy that had become commonplace in our peaceful classroom. But beyond that, beyond our petty disagreements and differences of opinion, one person suffered from the situation even more than any other, our class representative, Megami. Megami, could you fetch some more chalk and another Destra if you would? Okay. Oh, and stay after class a while, would you? I need some assistance with other matters. Fine. Fine. Mr. Kitsuna on, called on Megami frequently for even the most menial of tasks, giving the other girls reason to be jealous of Megami while also making her feel uncomfortable. Other students offered to help out with some asking why Megami was always being singled out, but the answer was always the same. It's a class representative's responsibility. By claiming that it was her job, Mr. Katsuna could use Megami's position against her, keeping her after class, telling her to meet with him early, and pushing Megami's friends away. Mr. Katsuna, if you need class help after class, I'd be happy to. No, Mr. Naoto, that is quite alright. I'm sure your class representative can handle it. You always say that. Stop picking on Megami and ask someone else for once. Two weeks detention. Anyone else? <laughs> Wherever possible, I tried to inject myself into the situation, as did some of the other boys from class. Though our reasons differed, they didn't want Mr. Katsuna to be alone with Megami any more than I did, and they were prepared to be suspended for their efforts. But no matter how much we tried, Mr. Katsuna would find an excuse to pull Megami away, keeping her from her friends and boyfriend alike. Feeling guilty over previously wanting to spend less time with Megami, I did my best to seek her out outside of class. Every day I would visit her in the student council room and offer to walk her home. However, since the day he showed up, Megami hasn't been the same. Just when does he get, where does he get off, telling everybody in class to vacate so he can talk to Megami in private? I've had my suspicions about Mr. Kitsuna from the moment he showed up, but now I can't even stand him. Worse, Megami refuses to say a word. We barely see each other at all now. And when we do, it's like she's not even Megami. I reflected on that thought for a moment, wondering precisely when Megami, like herself, became a good thing. For a while there, I wanted nothing more than time away from Megami, or for her to calm down and act like a normal person. But now, with Megami so gloomy and withdrawn, I realize how stupid I was. I, make, I liked Megami the way she was, the loud, clingy, boundary-challenged girl who would hug me out of nowhere, not this gloomy, introverted girl who jumps at her own shadow. I want the old Megami back, and if she does return, I'll never resent her again. Wow. Shit just got dark in this one, in this arc. Overcome by the need to talk to Megami, I returned to our classroom, the one which... Mr. Katsuna ordered us all to leave. From outside, I could faintly, he faintly hear Megami talking to our teacher as I pressed my ear against the vo door. Their voices become clear. For the last time, I'm not going. Oh, and just why is that? You're the only girl in class who hasn't come to see me, you know. Liar. You must have said some have some of my classmates fooled, but most of them know better than to trust you. 
Besides, why the hell would I ever want to see you? Even now, I'm su suppressing the urge to vomit. <laughs> you little bitch. Your mouth is always, is almost as foul as that of your miserable sister. Don't you dare talk about my si talk about her. Mega me and Mr. Kitsuna are continued to argue back and forth, further provoking one another with every word. I missed out on whatever started the exchange, but I could tell it was only going to get more heated. Fine, then. I guess I'll just have to spend the break with one of your more sensible classmates. You mean one of the idiots who can't see past your smile and your and into your black heart? Now, now, that wasn't very nice. What would your classmates think if they heard you ca you calling them idiots? You wouldn't want me to let that little slip of the tongue get up, would you? Go to hell. I don't care what you say. <laughs> if you say so. Sitting off to make good on his promise, Mr. Kitsuna left the classroom through the doors at the front of the room, leaving Megami all alone. Once I was sure he was out of earshot, ah, uh, sorry. I opened the doors at the back of the classroom and quietly entered. Megami? Hey, Daiki. What are you doing here? I thought that you left with the others. I did, but I came back. I was worried about you, Meg. Yeah, right. You say you were worried. You were standing up there eavesdropping, weren't you? Megami, that's not what I... I don't want to hear it, Hideki. I've done everything in my power to help you, to please you, to get close to you. And how do you respond? The second your girlfriend is in trouble, you pretend not to notice. You turn the other way, like it's not your problem. <clears throat> and you know what? If that's how it's going to be, then I don't need a boyfriend like you. They give me darted out the door, brushing past me with forceful, unbefitted, fitting her frame. And they give me wait. I called out to Megami, extending my arm towards the air as she quickly escaped my view. But even before I raised... Hold on, I missed that. Can, can I get the log, please? Come on, scroll, scroll upward, damn it. But before I even... Re I knew that she was gone. Okay, there we go. I ran out into the hallway to try catching up to... Try to catch up with Megami. Fortunately, I had no idea which direction she was, had headed in, nor did I know where she might go. The only places I could see her returning to were home or the student council club room. With those two locations in mind, I turned my attention to the club room, preparing myself to chase Megami. But as I turned, tried to run, my legs wouldn't move. I wanted to chase after her. I really did, and yet, she's right. I saw that bast what that bastard was doing, and all I did was put up feeble, passive resistance which got me nowhere. When those two were arguing, I didn't step in. I just listened, curious about the relationship they shared. And worst of all, when Megami first started acting gloomy, I was glad. I was fucking happy that my girlfriend was depressed. I wanted her to be quiet. I wanted to stay and to stay away from me. This whole time, I've been so unbelievably selfish. Not once have I truly thought about what Megami wanted or why she wouldn't tell me. As far as being her boyfriend goes, I failed utterly. Another week passed by since I last spoke to Megami, and with it came further misery. My neighbors, the Amamiya family, Shiro and her parents packed up and moved out of the city, all without so much as a goodbye. Ryo got his first high school, sus first school suspension for raising his fist towards Mr. Kitsuna, or at least the first I'm aware of, and hasn't been to school class since. Yui has been attending on and off, but she outright refuses to sit in on any of Mr. Kitsuna's classes, leaving her attendance spotty at best. The only ones still, in still attending are Megami, refuses to speak to me and my other and myself the only person not taking action despite our current predicament but when while i haven't been actively engaging with megami or a new teacher i have been paying attention okay guys i am back um it's been about i don't know uh 
six hours, I was getting really tired, so I just went and napped, and now it's like 3.46 in the morning, so there's going to be a cut in the video, obviously, but let's continue on with the story. <sighs> oh man, I can't believe that worked. I thought I was going to wet myself for a minute there, but I actually pulled that, pulled it off. I was recording everything like I said, but that line about uploading the phone video in real time was complete bluff. If Mr. Katsuna had taken my phone. Hey, Daddy. Dragging me away from my thoughts, Megumi called my name. Her tone of voice was calm, yet sad, completely different than the callous and angry tone she adopted since we last spoke. Megumi, I... Don't say it, Hideki. Please just don't. No matter what, I don't want to hear you apologize. Before I could finish my sentence, Megumi had already cut me off, aware of exactly what I, was, I wanted to say. Damn, too little, too late, I guess. Now that I can blame Meg, yeah, after all, after everything I've done or failed to do, there's no way that she would. After all, you have nothing to apologize for. Hmm? Eh? <laughs> I, I don't. But last time you said, I know what I said, and I don't think I was wrong to say it. But the truth is, it was misdirected. I wasn't angry at me, Daddy. I was angry at myself. I completely shut you out and lashed out at you for not not understanding. I let that man get under my skin and allowed it, history to repeat itself. Then does that mean you're ready to let me in? It's not, um, not something I feel comfortable telling people about, especially not now that he's back. But you deserve to know, Hideki. If one other person knows the truth, I want you. From the time of my oldest memory, I was always... I always lived on in a living, nurturing household. I lived with a serious father. He devoted himself to proving, providing for us, a caring mother who could never bring herself to raise a hand at us, and my sister, Hitome. The person I idolized more than anyone else. Throughout my childhood, those perceptions remained unchanging. I loved my family to a fault, and I always knew I couldn't can't, could count on them. I would allow my sister, I would follow my sister around mindlessly, compete with her for our parents' attention, and wind up apologizing as my antics went too far. No matter how restless I was, no matter how inappropriate my actions, I was never scolded or hated. My family reaped reciprocated my feelings wholehearted life, and such minor squabbles could never get between us. Bam. As I grew older, although my priorities and loyalties changed, my core feeling state remained the same. I looked up to my older sister every step of the way, every test she faced, every award she received, every confession she politely rejected. It's my idol. Person of all ends. Pardon me. Whom I wanted to emulate. So I would follow her around, study the things she studied, act the way she acted until the moment when I realized I didn't have what it took. I was quite a quiet, unattractive, good for nothing little girl with a sister complex. A parasite leaking off my amazing sister, living in her shadow. No matter how much I wanted to be like her, no matter how much I wanted to be her, I couldn't. Time continued to pass us by, and I graduated accepted and gradually accrued to accept my place. 
Even if I couldn't be him the person I idolized, I could at least be by her side. That alone wouldn't, would be an end. to join the student council? That's right. And you understand it's not all fun and games, right? There's a lot of work to be done, and there are many responsibilities that come with the job. That's okay. I just want to help you and other students as much as possible. <laughs> Is that so? That's quite a nice attitude you have there. Well, won't you get bored? Being on the student council means giving up your free time for the sake of the school, you know. I know, but on a chan will be there, right? There's, so there's no way I'll get bored. <laughs> what a charmer you are. You're going to make your significant other very happy one day. But for the time being, if you're really sure about this, then welcome aboard. But y you mean it? Of course, someone has to take care over for me as the student council president when I graduate. We may only have spent this one year serving together, but I look forward to working with you, Miss Megami Hinohara. The relationship with my relationship, my sister and I shared, was often to ridicule was often subject to ridicule by others, but as long as we worked together, I couldn't care less. I truly adore my older sister, and the days we spent working on student council together were some of the happiest of my life. And whether we were studying, sur surveying students, helping teachers, or just doing paperwork, every day was bliss. From the bottom of my heart, I wished for those days to never end. But all that changed when he showed up. And don't forget about the notes for next lesson, okay, he told me? Yes, sir. Good. After you're done with those, please come to the staff room. We need to have a total of talk. Understood. When the second semester began, he told me his class went on their own. And they went to homeroom teacher change. Her class was paired with Mr. Katsuna, a relatively new teacher, transferring in from another school. Pardon me. His credentials were stellar, and most of the female students adored him, but he told me. From the moment that he appeared, he told me began to change. Every day she'd come home with a little less energy, tired from all the extra work her new teacher put her through. But physically and mentally exhausted, she had a little had little time for the student council. Or for her friends, or even me. I thought that her diligent nature and work ethic were to blame. Being a natural perfectionist, everything he told me did it required the utmost effort. Thinking that way would right would right did I have to interfere. The hardworking sister I adored so adored was trying her, tiring herself out by being true to her nature. How could I do anything except forgive her my support? But in reality. I was just naive. Oh? She, she was just being naive. I said no. Hey, come on. Don't be like that. I've seen the way you looked at me before. Don't try and deny it by acting all innocent. Just a little won't hurt, will it? Please, I don't want this. One day after school, on a day like any other, I heard headed over to the school and council club room. I was running a bit late performing my cleaning duties for the, my class, so I hurried over as quickly as I could. When I reached the club room, however, there was a sound on the door saying that the club wouldn't be meeting and that we should go ho straight home. At first I thought nothing of it. I was late, so surely one of the other members have, must have left a note for me to find. But the moment I turned to walk away, I heard un uh, the unmistakable voice of my sister. Leave me alone. Get away from me, you pedophile. Oh, now you've done it. I thought you were a nice, pretty, proper girl. You soft, foul blood. You're just like all the other bitches. Excuse me? 
a quick quietly slid the door open just a fraction completely unaware of what's going on inside at the moment i did i froze stop it what do you think you're doing whatever i want you little bitch what I saw was Hitomi's homeroom teacher, Mr. Kitsuna, holding on to my sister from behind. She was in pain, fiercely resisting his grip, trying desperately to break free. But the man he is here, senior, was undeniably stronger, and his position gave him the advantage. Gripping her hair out with one hand, she started to undo Hitomi's shirt with the other. No, no, you can't do this. Don't you care about what will happen to you? <laughs> Don't be silly, nothing will happen to you. At worst, I'll just get transferred again. To two non sister ravings of a broken little girl. Mr. Katsuna, undebated, undoing the next button of Hitomi's shirt. Her words were having no effect on him. If anything, her resistance excited him even more. Y you're sick. I'll have you arrested. You'll never see the light of day again. I <laughs> do try. I love it when the seemingly strong girls resist. Those other bitches fawn all over me, but where there's, where's the fun in no, there's no ch if there's no chase? This isn't a chase, you're a criminal. Eh? A rose by any other name? More importantly, Hee-chan, are you a virgin? What? You, you horrid pedophile. <laughs> There's that word again. For straight eight student, you don't seem to be very smart. I guess we'll fix I just have to fix that attitude of yours. Mr. Kitsune undid another button of Hitomi's shirt, then another. She continued to flail her arms, but the people were too strong for her to break free. She needed help, a third party to intervene. And I I was too scared to move. In front of me, I saw my beloved sister, the person I meant more to me than anyone else in the world, being attacked by an older man, and I froze. I recognized how hopeless the situation was. I knew that she needed my help, and yet I couldn't move. My peerless older sister, my role model, my idol, perfect human being, was in trouble. The situation on my any other she'd been in before. My beautiful, courageous, serene older sister, a girl who couldn't complain, calmly think through any scenario before her, had been enveloped by a scene even she could not find her way out of. My beloved sister was going to be raped. She would have her chastity stolen away by force, taken away by taken by a criminal, a cowardly Craven, who sought to prey on the weak. My perfect older sister, who would be a shell of her old self, crippled by a disgusting pedophile who wanted nothing more than to satiate his own lust. A despicable, lowly insect of a human being would do irre irreparable harm to my sister, and I would stand by and do nothing? The more I thought about it, the angry I became. I could feel the door frame shift in my hand, and the strength of my grip increased, threatening to crack the wood as I looked towards the enemy and with, my, with utter malice in my eyes. I'd never felt so angry in my life, but at that moment, I wanted nothing more than to violently murder the man in front of me. And when that rage finally consumed me, I was no longer afraid. Leave my sister alone, you disgusting rapist. I uh, slammed the door open with as much force as I could muster, screaming loudly enough that any remaining students on the same floor could hear me. But he told me and Mr. Katsuna stopped dead, rendered speechless by my by the unexpected interrupt and interruption. Megami. He told me softly uttered my name, as though confirming that she weren't wasn't seeing an illusion. But rather than display relief or gratitude. So this is your little sister, huh? No, please, leave her out of this. Oh, wouldn't why should I do that? Listen to that foul mouth of hers. You've already corrupted her. Obviously, she's in need of some education. No, you can't. Go on, begging me. Don't let him touch you. Shut it. Showing no concern for herself, he told me he began, begged me to escape. Mr. Katsuna, rather than feel worried about my presence, saw me as a tool to leverage my sister. They both saw my attempted 
that saving my sister is a little more than interference. Unnecessary and without purpose. Mark Kelly! I, was, I wasn't about to give up. Even if my sister told me to save myself, there was no way I could abandon her. After standing idle with that, completely oblivious to the treatment she endured, unable to do anything to help her, I had reached my limit. Let her go right now, or I'm going to scream until every teacher in this school is come running, you filthy pedophile. You. Mr. Kitsunas, it's now one small, agitated by my words. From the moment I started eavesdropping, I noticed one word in particular, particular seemed to drive him crazy. Well, Mr. Pedophile, are you going to release her or not? Mr. Pedophile, you wouldn't want to get fired now, would you, Mr. Pedophile? Mr. Kitsuna glared at me angrily, tightening his grip on my sister's hair. You little bitch. Every bit as horrid is and contemptible as your rat bag sister. Megami, stop it. You need to get out of here. I'll leave when the sick pig leaves. Though, I suppose a pedophile like him would rather stay at school than go home. So it might be a while. Shut up, shut the hell up. T turning more of his attention towards me, Mr. Katina controlled to go matter and matter. But his grip on my sister's hair didn't loosen at all. If anything, the violent shaking was causing her more pain than before. Uh-oh, Mr. Pedophile's getting angry. Say, Mr. Pedophile, why were you transferred here anyway? Did your pedophilia tendencies get the best of you? Were you out of those pedophile? Stop provoking me, you don't know what you're doing. I guess pedophiles never change, huh? You can take the pedophile out of school, but you can't take the... Shut the fuck up. <gasps> oh! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did he just rip the hair out of his sister? Of her sister? At that moment, I finally understood my sister's desperate pleas. From my position in the doorway, looking directly at my sister, I could see everything. I watched the horror as my sister screaming to me to run away. Her head slammed with violent force against the table in front of her. I clearly saw her tongue being severed by her teeth and the unbelievable amount of blood that followed. I froze, staring blankly at the scene before me as my sister bled out. Oh, oh fuck. Mr. Katsuna, the man who had just bashed my sister's tin into the table in front of him, was speechless. Seconds ago, he was agitated before beyond belief, consumed by anger and lust. But now, standing in the pool of his victim's blood, my sister's blood, reality had finally struck. No, I, I never meant to. Shocked by his own actions, Mr. Katsuna remained frozen in place. What was I was what was intended to be an act of lust and domination ended in death, a result nobody present had predicted. In the face of this vile scene Whoa Not even the matter himself keep his cow. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm losing the voice because my throat's dry. Unlike Mr. Kitsuna, I did not flee the scene. I didn't move, didn't speak, didn't register anything happening around me. Despite standing, I was practically comatose, rendered useless by what I had just seen. My thoughts continued to cycle throughout memories of dear to me, fond recollections of our time together, peaceful days and I, I thought would never end. But ultimately, I realized there was one memory that mattered. I tried to save my sister. I tried to help her. I wanted to protect my beloved sister who meant the world to me and for whom I would have done anything. And I got her killed. Despite thinking that way, I didn't really blame myself. Even if my intervention had been the trigger, I was lucid enough to realize I wasn't to blame. There was someone else, the person who caused all of this, the person who set all of this in motion, the only person I could never forgive. Kitsune. Wow. Da 
that's some fucked up shit right there. That story was just fucked. Holy fuck. I uttered quietly to myself that those were who had heard the collective scream of my sister and I had arrived. Had arrived. Katsuna? I was in Mr. Katsuna, the new teacher. Eh? What about him? I don't see. Despite the urgency which would they had arrived, a few people who did show up were totally relaxed. Or so they were, right and tail. Oh my god, what the? Ah! Good heavens, is that? Students, don't look. Found sight, sitting there sights on my sister's fresh corpse. The students and teachers who gradually arrived up at the scene of all had the same reaction. Students were repulsed, teachers were horrified, yet they all stood around contributing nothing at all. Katsuna, he did this. Mm, Mr. H Miss Hinohana, what are you? I'm telling you it was Miss Katsuna. He did this. That disgusting pedophile did this. Calm down, Miss Hinohara. Just take a deep breath and... He did that. He did. He tried to rape my sister. Then he killed her. I saw it all with my own eyes. I continued to shout, telling everybody who would listen about what I saw. I repeated time and time again that it was Mr. Kitsuna who was responsible. He was the one who killed my sister. And in the end, he was caught. Blood stains on his shoes, my sister's hairs on his shirts, and his fingerprints embedded into the flesh as bruises. I thought, it would take a while for DNA tests to be conducted, and for them, that man to be charged. Everybody would knew without a doubt that he was the one who killed her. Wow. But even with that man responsible in custody, life didn't get any better. Parents, utterly broken after having lost their first daughter, refused to look at me as much. Refused to so much as look at me. My mere existence reminded them of you to me. Just by being in the same house as them, I was causing them in pain. I, it was then that I realized he to me was the lucky one. Without Keith on me around, and with my parents rejecting me outright, for the first time in my life, I was completely alone. Left behind by my own family, I experienced agony worse than the soul-crushing loneliness, which I key to me could no longer feel, and my parents simply refused to. I had craved their attention more than anything. I wanted my family to acknowledge me, see that they still had another daughter. But as time dragged on, their wounds did not heal. Upon realizing that, I had no longer had a place to in that household, I quickly moved out. My parents readily agreed to rent an apartment for me, anything that to get me away, get away from me, and I started to live on my own. I brought with me my schools, my only my school supplies and clothes, happy to live a minimistical lifestyle as I tried to regain my sense of self. Between talks with police officers and counselors, I hadn't been to school since the day my sister died, nor had I done anything for myself. When I moved, so when I moved out, I saw it as a chance to rebuild myself anew. I wanted to become the person I always wanted to be, the happy, energetic, reliable person I always looked up to. No longer living in someone else's shadow, I would finally have an, an identity of my own. Adopting the best parts of my doll, I would surpass her at last and become someone who could have been her equal. And that is how I became who I am today. Sorry, I think I may have gotten a little off topic here, there. It's a long story, so it's hard to keep track without leaving out any details. Why? I clutched my hand, hands tight as I continued during, to do during Megumi's recollection. I could feel my hands going white and my nails threatening to break the skin. Hidaiki, what do you mean, why? What do you think I mean? 
Why would a person like that, why would anybody do such a horrible thing to another human being? Why would your parents choose to live in grief rather than be thankful for the daughter they still have? Why would the police ever let an inhuman monster like that out of prison? Why? Just why? I screamed at Meg and me a few, as a few tears began to scream down my cheeks. My face was hot and I had no idea what kind of awful expression I was making. Even so, me daddy. Megami just smiled at me. After telling such an emotion, motive and depressing story, after seeing my face riddled with anguish and empathy, Megami sighed and smiled. I wish I could tell you, Hideki. I don't know why my parents feel the way they do, and I hope I never have to find out. I don't know why Mr. Kitsuna won't let go either. With all the evidence stacked against him, it seems inconceivable that he would get out of prison, let alone teach again. Honestly, I don't think I can ask you any of the questions. I simply don't have the answers. Even so. Oh? Thank you, Hideki. Oh, okay. Huh? I don't understand why you... Hideki, when my sister died, I thought my life was over. I thought I would never smile again. That I had nothing to live for. Further to that... Well, even my parents shot with even my parents shunning me. I was truly alone for the first time in my life. I was devastated, isolated, exiled, and I I desperately craved the attention, the warmth of another human being. In the moment I laid eyes on you, I knew you were the one I was waiting for. Megan continued to smile, not hesitating in the least to speak such embarrassing words. I know it sounds a bit corny, but I truly believe that what I experienced was love at first sight. As time went on, I thought that feeling would fade. I thought I'd realize that it was just physical attraction, or that I was mistaken. Pardon me. And yet, the more I learned about you, the stronger my feelings grew. Daki Naoto, a pure innocent child, kind, helpful boy, it's fun to be around. Someone who can go, go at my pace, yet take control when things go wrong. You put up with my selfishness, yet you didn't never been afraid to speak your mind. You softly reprimand me, making me want to scold, making me me want you to scold me all the more. And then finally today, you cried for me. You defended me when you needed you most. You got angry for my sake. You cried over the pain I did, I felt. You listened in silence as I told you everything. Hideki, now more than ever, I am certain about that. I love you. From start to finish, made me happily confess her feelings. Her teary eyes, blushing cheeks, and smiling lips all filled me with uncontrollable anxiety as I returned her loving gaze with quiet shock. However, knowing that I couldn't remain this way forever, I gave her the only answer I could think of. Hmm? Hmm. Without saying a word, I took Megami in my arms and stole her lips. She was surprised at first and almost jumped back, but as soon as she realized what was happening, Megami forcefully returned my embrace. Her soft lips pressed hard against mine, leaving no space between us. I could feel every inch of her warm body pressing up against mine. Even Megami's heartbeat was clearly felt by my body, beating wildly as she tightened her grip, unwilling willing to let go. But as she squeezed from the air, squeezed the air from my wounds, I had no little choice but to go against her. Whoa, calm down, Megami. Let me breathe once in a while, okay? I know I was the one who started it, but still. Heh, <laughs> not I'm sorry. It's just, I've dreamt about this for so long. I guess I got a little fix. Too excited. You dreamt about us kissing? Yes, among other things. Uh oh, not good, not good. If she starts saying those things, all our bodies are pressed together like this. Megami is bound to feel my. But that isn't what I meant. Huh? What I mean what to say is, I've dreamt about my first kiss, about my first boyfriend. It's not that rare for a high school girl to think that way. I know, but for someone like me, cast away from everyone else, everyone she cares about, 
Honestly, you did. You, if, it, if I didn't have you, I don't know what I'd do. Mega me. So that's how it is. I kind of figured from her story, but I understand now why Megami was so clingy and friendly. For someone who has lost everything, it's only natural that she'd be desperate for companionship, whether it's in the form of love or just friendship. And yet I... Hideki, what's wrong? Megami, I need to apologize. Hmm, you do? But you've done nothing wrong, Aki. How I wish that were true. Megami, the truth is, I couldn't stand you. Hmm? This is going to be hard. Megami's being honest with me. I owe her the truth. From the moment we met, you were, you've been loud, clingy, and had serious boundary issues. You invited yourself into my home. You misled people, my mother included, thinking we had a relationship at times. You even pushed my other friends away. Even so, I did like you, so I convinced myself that after we started different, dating, you'd, you would change. You wouldn't be so needy. And yet, by the time summer break was over, I couldn't wait to get away from you. Hey, Daisy. Megami's voice cracked a little as she spoke my name. That's why when you were in so much trouble by that man, I didn't notice. I didn't notice the harassment of my girlfriend was enduring. All I could think about was my own damn freedom. I was honestly relieved that you were depressed, and if it meant having you tone everything down, I thought it might be for the best. But that was unbelievably selfish of me. I should have told you straight at how I feel, felt. I should have been honest with you from the start. Instead, I just kept deceiving you, pretending not that everything was alright. Right up until the moment I burst in here, it's just been one deception after another. I've been the worst boyfriend ever. That's why I'm sorry for everything I've done and everything that I failed to do. Megami stared at me silently as I finished speaking. Same silence. I craved, so craved not long ago, a fantasy when Megami was present, filled the room. But with the next word to be spoken, likely to be an appletive or condemnation, perhaps silent would be for the best. Even if I've hurt Megami, it would we couldn't continue as we were. She needed to know the truth, no matter what, no matter the cost. I only hope that she can find it in her heart to forgive me. Is that so? Megami looked at me with teary eyes, trying her best not to cry. Her lips quivered as she spoke, and I could see her hands trembling by her sides. I'm, I'm sorry. Don't apologize, Hideki. You've done nothing wrong. I was the one in the wrong. For what my feelings when you left the hand. No, that's. Don't deny it. I know how unreasonable I've been. If anything, I'm glad you told me that, Hideki. After all, I need to know these things if I'm going to be your bride. Well, eh? Like, I mean, I'm glad you can still joke like that, but I'm not joking. Oh, I know I've said a lot and done a lot of stupid things, but I've never lied about how I feel about you. Besides, even if you didn't like me in the beginning, well, you started to resent me. That matter. All that matters is how you feel about me right now. And whether you say it or not, your lips have already told me everything I need to know. At any rate, Aki, even if you made some mistakes, I'm hardly in a position to judge. Neither one of us is perfect, and I love you all the same. Megami's tears have dry had dried up, and yet her face remained flushed and red. Despite the ease in with which she had said such things, her embarrassment was obvious. And making me look like she might collapse at any minute. After the emotional roller coaster she had been on, and the physical hardship she had endured, Megan needed to rest, even if she didn't realize, hadn't re yet realized it herself. So, where do we go from here? If that was a breaking up kiss, I'm going to demand a do over. Smiling like her old self, Megan showed no sign of, of previous dismay and continued with her usual humor. Haha, <laughs> is that so? And if it wasn't? Then I'm going to pay you back in turn for taking my first kiss. So we're kissing either way. Thank you. Isn't that a given? When couples have a fight, the kiss and make up is not how it goes. Actually, I have heard a saying like that. Of course, even if it wasn't a real saying, Megami would still use it to her advantage. And just this once. I'll gladly let her. Wow, we just let her have her way. 
That that wasn't unexpected at all, actually. July first. Oh, August first. Sorry. All right, class. That's all from me. Please prepare for your next lesson. As our class for the first day ended. So did our time with Mr. Kitsuna. Although he now t teaches several subjects, today we only have him for one class and homeroom, making today an easy day to sit through. Better yet, oh, Megumi, could you? No. Megumi has learned to stand up to Mr. Kitsuna even more. Megumi, that's Miss Hinohara, Sensei. Miss Hinohara, I understand that you have things to do, but first, sorry, Sensei, student council work awaits me. So if you need help that badly. I'm sure you can find some other volunteers in class, right, girls? Yes, absolutely, all right, bud. Come in, please let us know, Sensei. No, that's... I can't be sick if maybe we can do it separately. That's right, Mr. Sensei saying that we are good enough. Uh, uh, no, it's not like that, I just... Great, let's go then, shall we? Dragged by each time, Mr. Katsuna was forcefully escorted out of the classroom by two girls. He had charmed on his first day, night. <laughs> he glanced back in desperation, only to see Megumi smirking and waving goodbye. <laughs> What's like a charm? I'm getting pretty good at this, if I do say so myself. No kidding. Mr. Katsuna never knew what hit him. <laughs> He's on fire for being such a charmer. And now that the hindrance is gone, there's nobody left to get between me and I. Uh, um, Megumi, I still in the classroom, you know. Saying what? What does that have to do with anything? You didn't think I was alluding to something perverted, did you? Of course not. You would never do that. Yeah, I feel the other side does from you across the room. Just how much of a pervert is your class rep? Hey, I'm not a pervert. I just have a healthy interest in Hideki, that's all. Uh, don't you mean by a healthy interest in sex? Or in the other gender? Nope. <laughs> Ugh. Never mind, I'm out of here. I came over because I thought you two were having fun. I'm not that kind of fun. Wait, wait, it's not like that. <laughs> hmm? Perhaps I'm just judge you. She seems she knows better than to get in the way of learning after all. Oh, Megami. Boy, Megami. What? Did you want you to join me in? I think it's literally in a relationship for a story like- Damn it! <laughs> Damn it! Well, I can never unhear that. I was like, and I know for a fact that that's what I'll be thinking of when I go to bed tonight. Megami and Yuri, huh? Hideki, what's with that creep grin on your face? I love you and all, but seriously, you're scaring the children. Oh god, did I just get called creepy by Megami? The girl who stalked me crept into my bed, hugged me on our first meeting, and went through my underwear. She just called me creepy. Anyway, I was key wasn't kidding about student council work. I know it's a short break, but try not to miss me too much, okay? Ah, uh, sure. I'll just make do with the, your photo until you get back. Yeah, it's the spirit. Make sure you keep PG-13, okay? <laughs> Just go already. <laughs> Later. Oh my god. She did PG-13, huh? Megami happily skipped out of the classroom, wearing a delighted grin as she giggled the entire way to the student council room. <sighs> what a handful. Megami's calmed down a fair bit recently. But her given period is of near depression, even this much feels like a natural disaster. Yeah, well, it's kind of notable that she's going to act like that, you dumbass. <sighs> with another school having passed without school day having passed without innocent, I slept with welcome ease, plagued by not a single negative thought. Between the uninhibited un excitement Megami showed during summer break. And the depression she began to suffer under Mr. Kitsuna's reign. Restful nights like last night appeared to be a thing. Restful nights like last night appeared to be a thing of the past. I thought for sure my my life would 
henceforth be one dramatic event after another spurred on by my relationship with my stalker slash class rap. But since this morning, the morning Megami confided in me. Good morning, Hideki. Megami has seemed like a new person. Good morning, Meg. I see that you remembered all your pills this morning. My pills? Okay, that was rude. Usually you have jumped on me from behind, screamed in my ear, and given me a heart attack by now. The fact that you haven't means you remembered your meds. Hey, I did those things out of love. Her love of scaring the living daylights out of me. At any rate, those days are behind me now. I told you already. Didn't I? I'm done pretending to be someone I'm not. Since making me resolved to living in her ge- Resolved to stop living. In her deceased sister's shadow, her behavior has suddenly changed. She's been more defiant, particularly towards Mr. Kitsuna, more soft-spoken and mellow around others, and even less domineering. Thanks to Megami's decision to turn her life around, I finally have a sane girlfriend. You told me, alright. I wasn't sure what you meant, but you definitely told me. That's right. So how do you like my, the new Megami? Or rather, the old one. No, the real Megami. Oh my, look who's having an identity crisis now. I love the old, new, real Megami. She's everything I liked about the last month model, but with the most of the bugs sorted out. Bugs? Hmm, now that's a problem. I realize that Megami isn't into video games, but to not even know what a bug is, the basic computing terminology. Or maybe it's because in Megami's vocabulary, vocabulary the term bug refers to solely the secret recording device. It's, Never mind, I was just being a smartass. The point is, I love the new you, Megami. Deciding to, to be true to yourself is the best decision you've made. Oh, Aki, you sweet talker. If we weren't at school right now, I'd just eat you up. Well, that's one part of Megami that hasn't changed. Nope, not that I'm complaining. But, they will have to wait until later. Right now, we have a double date with some textbooks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Of all the things about herself Megami could have changed, why was her passion for schoolwork spared? If we have to one more study session together, self-study lesson together, I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> Our first three classes for the day passed quickly, providing little amusement and interest to the present. We all kept our eyes on our textbook, paid attention, and never provoked nor caused any problems for our teachers. It was just another regular day in the life of, the, of a regular high school student. It's strange to think that I'd miss days like this. I used to crave excitement, holding my, hoping for my boring high school life to change some, no change, for those things to become interesting. But after the drama with Megami, not to mention Shinatsu's disappearance and Shiro moving away. I'd rather... I think I'd rather have live a boring life after all. While students continued to leave the classroom, I kept a cautious eye on our teacher, Mr. Katsuna. If there was one person capable of wrecking the peace I so craved, it was him. The very man responsible for ruining Megami's life. But even as Megami bid me goodbye as she headed to the student council club room, Mr. Katsuna showed no sign of approaching her. Throughout the lesson, he didn't call on Megami at all. He dressed her outside of class, outside of calling the roll. He didn't dress her outside of calling the roll. He didn't ask for her help and generally seemed to avoid her. If I didn't know any better, I think he'd actually given up. Ah, uh, Hideki, please hold on a moment. Just as I prepared to leave the classroom myself, Mr. Kitsuna approached me. Yes, Sensei? Hmm, mm, Mr. Naoto, I was hoping I could speak to you in private for a moment. Eh? Wants to speak to me in private? Sure, I'm flattered, but you know I don't swing that way. Mr. Naoto, I'm being serious here. So am I. I even have a girlfriend. If you, I'd ask if you wanted to meet her, but she seems to hate your guts. Mr. Kitsuna sighed, and as I refused to play along, actually, Mr. Naoto, the, your girlfriend is the one I want to talk to you about. I'm shocked. Please, you no, Mr. Naoto. I need your help getting through to her. Miss Hinohara hasn't been acting like herself lately. As her teacher, I'm worried about her. You seem like a distant, responsible young man, and I was hoping you could help you kill her. 
Mr. Kitsuna's eyes wi widened in shock as, I, as what I said. My, the knowledge behind my words was something none of the students here know about, bar one, a random student from his class. He should have no idea about his past. But as Mr. Katsuna remarked, he, who he was speaking to, his eyes narrowed and he regained his calm. So she's still telling people that, huh? I really will need to talk to her. Mr. Katsuna mumbled underneath his breath, too low for me to hear. He seemed angry, yet in control, quietly deciding upon the next course of action. Sensei? Hmm, oh right, Mr. Naoto. Please forget about our conversation just now. I won't be requiring your assistance after all. Uttering those hurried words, Mr. Kitsuna returned to his desk. Grabbing something from the top drawer, he finally left the classroom. Following Mr. Kitsuna's abrupt departure, I completed my final class for the day and school came to an end. Megan and I walked back to my house together, swapping roles as she escorted me home safely. I protested at first, saying that I should be the one to see her off, but knowing Megumi's legendary abstinence, I never stood the chance. Well, here we are. Home sweet home. Yep, for one of us, that is. Hee <laughs> hee, for now. But our time will come, Hideki. Just you wait and see. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this is my stop, so. Aren't you going to let me in? Yeah, I'll see you to. Uh, I invite you in at this time of night. <laughs> Why no? I promise that I'll be quiet. Your mother will never even know I was here. I'm scared to think of how many times Megumi could have been here without my knowledge. Ah, but sleeping over on a school night would be bad, right? So some other time, maybe? Better it easy, then. I'll make sure to wear my sexiest underwear. You do the same, okay, Aki? Maybe he's actually... No, wait. That isn't what I... Damn it. Sweet dreams, Aki. By the time I had gotten my mind out of the gutter, Megami had already begun to walk home. Damn it. Always with the mind in the gutter shit. All that night, despite my recent indication to go to sleep early, I found myself wide awake. I was past as I stared at the ceiling, trying to fall asleep. I closed my eyes, tossed and turned, and did everything I could think of to fall asleep. But no matter how hard I tried, my mind and rest, a single lingered in my mind. Is it really over? Although Mr. Katsuna had backed off Megami started to, once Megami started to fight back, I couldn't help but feel that he wouldn't give up so easily. Earlier today, he had tried approaching me instead and trying to use me to get to Megami. Would he try to get right again? Would he use some of Megami's classmates to lure her out? Would he invoke my name in order to solicit a reaction from her? Those worried thoughts kept running through my mind, eating away at me, as my mind finally began to slip away. Don't you dare fall asleep, Hideki. Watching as the last few lights went out in, in his tragic apartment block, in his target's apartment block, a solitary figure waited patiently in his car. He bided his time, gazing through the binocular to the window of a single apartment. The subject of his curiosity had already gone to sleep hours ago, leaving him to watch an empty house. As he waited for the right time to strike, I managed to avoid prison last time, but I don't think I have the funds to make that happen again. I need to do this right. Mr. Kitsuna turned his sights towards a bundle of rope and gag while sitting in the car passenger seat. Taking both his left hand, both in his left hand, he opened the door and exited the car, slowly making his way to his, his target's apartment. Just you wait, Megami. Tonight, nobody will get in our way. Oh man, what a drag! Took forever for me to get a, to sleep, get to sleep, and what? And when I finally do, nature calls. Half ass sleep, wimply dragging my feet along. I made my way from the bathroom to my bedroom. As I flopped back down onto bed, however, I even uh, if as I closed my eyes, I noticed a disturbance. On my desk was flashing light, made many times brighter by the darkness surrounding it. God damn it, who would be trying to contact me at this hour? I swear if it's Rio. I begrudgingly got up from my bed and moved over to my desk, squinting at the eyes. But hmm, nothing from Rio, but I guess he gets to live for another day. No text message, no income. Three income, three missed calls, and one voicemail from Megami. I selected the voicemail and pressed it to my e pressed my ear against the phone. Pressing a familiar voice to play. Hey, Becky, please help me. He's here. He's at my house. Megami's voicemail ended, taking with it the last of my fatigue. Even without giving me a name, her quiet yet panicked voice told me everything I needed to know. I opened my eyes wide, staring at the timestamp of the voicemail. That was almost two hours ago. No, no, oh, no, 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 no,
no bothering to change clothes or even put on shoes. I ran to my house, passed him and I would have thought possible. And I, I sprinted down the street with only a single thought in my mind, desperately running to what Megan was apartment. Damn it, I knew this wasn't over. She'll play along with Megan's request and let her stay over. She'll wonder about my earlier encounter with Mr. Kasuna. Now because of me, Megan is... I made it to Megan's apartment block in record time, ignoring my ragged driving and weary legs as I sprinted up the staircase. I ran to Megami's apartment, threw open the door, unlocked, letting myself in. Megami, Megami, where are you? Uh, there you are, Rocky. Um, I was beginning to think you wouldn't make it. As I screamed Megami's name, a familiar presence appeared before me. Standing, me in front of, standing in front of me was Megami. The girl from whom I received the distress signal two hours ago, holding her, uh, holding a knife in her hand at her feet was, is, is that, mm, is that what? Speak in proper sentences, Aki. I held my hand over my mouth and suppressed the urge to vomit as I looked at the bloody corpse at Megami's feet. Though his face was scarred and bloody, shredded until the limp, lump of flesh could no longer be considered a face, the body in front of me, without a doubt, belonged to Mr. Katsuna. Megami, this, what happened here? I don't understand. Aki, what's wrong? Why aren't you coming closer? You don't have to be afraid. You can't hurt anyone anymore. I made sure of it. Megami stared at me with blank, lifeless eyes, as though the cold set her feet didn't mean a thing. She kept just kept clutching the knife in her hand, prepared to hack and slash whoever dared walk through her door. Megami, put the knife down, okay? You said it yourself, right? You can't hurt anyone anymore, so why don't you just... I wish I could, Aki. I really wish I could. Megami's style disappeared as she tightened her grip on the knife. What are you talking about? You don't need that anymore, right? So put it down and we can... Damn it, Aki, I'm telling you I can't. Something will happen when I do. That this will... thing will just disappear. That none of this will ever have happened. This isn't a jokey day. You just think of my... thing at my feet is a prison sentence. I killed someone, and now I have to pay. I am a murderer. Megami began to wave the knife around as she spoke. Though most of her blood had dried, of the blood had dried long ago, long time ago, specks continued to plow, painting her kitchen a deeper shade of red. Because murderers, murderers need to be punished. Megami's voice reverted to a whisper as she looked down, looked towards the corpse at her feet. He needed to die, he did. The man who killed my sister needed to die. But now, I'm just like him. I committed the exact same sin. So if death was the only thing he had to look forward to then... That means her hip loosened, but she still failed to drop the knife. With nothing but a death on her mind and a fresh corpse at her feet, Megami's options were limited, and there's no ideal way out. Megami, you can't mean that. You were defending yourself right, you had no other choice. This is nothing like what happened to your sister. You are even remotely similar to that scumbag. Even even if that's true, I, I can't live like this. I'm a killer, you dicky. I'm the thing I hated most. Even if he deserved to die, it wasn't my decision to make. Whether people forgive me or not, doesn't matter. This is something that I'll have to live with for the rest of my life. It's not going back from this, Hideki. Can't you see? No matter what I do, my life is over. No, that's not true. You should... I should what, Hideki? Turn yourself in. You should turn yourself in. You, you want me to turn myself in? But then I... You said you're so yourself, right? Murderers need to be punished. And how are they punished? It's not your decision to make. Those were your words, Megami. Now are you going to stick by them? Megami looked towards the corpse at her feet once more, silenced by my words. Although she kept holding on to the knife in her hand, she, her grip loosened and she no longer showed any inclination to actually use it. If I turn myself in, then... You'll be arrested, you'll face court, you'll be sentenced. You'll pay for your crime in a matter determined by the law. Alright, I'll do it. I'll turn myself in. A smile returned to Megami's face as she made her mind up. 
Although it wasn't an outcome either of us wanted, we both knew it was the only way out. Even if Mamie thinks she deserves to die, I'm certainly certain that the court will find in her favor. Megan's sister was killed by that man, and she suffered immeasurable psychological damage at her hand. At, she suffered immeasurable psychological damage at his hands. Add to the fact that Megami was defending herself from an intruder in her own home, and there's no way she'll be convicted. As I optimistically thought about how Megami's life would turn out, she took a step forward. Hey, Peggy, one last thing. Steps, stepping over Mr. Katsuna's Forbes, Megami took another step forward, now standing stationary a few feet in front of me. Before I call the police, I'm going to take a shower. Although unexpected, Megami's words made sense to me. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll just close the door and join me. Jo join you? Megami, I'm relieved that you can still joke at a time like this. I'm not joking, and I'm not taking no for an answer. If this is my last free night of freedom, I don't want to have any regrets. Look at me, Daiki. Let us become one at last. Oh, wow. Without even thinking, I grabbed Megami's hand that was covered in blood. I didn't say anything, I didn't, I couldn't even if I wanted to. Last night of freedom. Well, I think that's it for Megami's story arc for now. I think there's a little bit more to it. Yeah, there's definitely a little more to it. Over the many months since Megami killed Mr. Katsuna, my life has taken a series of unexpected turns. Right by her side, as Megami called the police, I was taken to the police station as a witness to her crime and consequently asked to give a statement and corroborate Megami's story. We were, were separated for a while, but Megami spending her nights behind bars as a suspected killer and me being sent to counseling because of what I had seen. A full month went by before we even saw one another again, and even then it was only in passing as I showed up to court. Megami's trial soon began, begun soon enough. But with the actual proceedings took several months, despite being an open and shut case with both witness and a confession, the jury remained divided on what her punishment should be. Maybe told the court how he had broken into her house and how she was just defending herself. She knew he was a killer, given what had happened to her sister, and wasn't going to take any chances. But the prosecution claimed it was an opportunistic killing. They claimed that she knew ahead of time that he would be visiting, and she abused that to this visit to take revenge. Fortunately, although Mr. Katsuna had indeed faked documents ahead of time explained to explain why he, had, he was at Megami's apartment in case he was caught, his time of death and security cameras both placed him at the scene of the very, at the scene the very, at the very late at night. Finally, I showed the court the video I had taken of Mr. Katsuna harassing Megami in the student council clubroom, and there wasn't a single juror remaining who thought she was guilty. Today, seven months after Megami was taken into custody, she has finally been found not guilty. Megami was still meets, will still need to attend counseling, and she will be forced to regularly report in to the local police station to verify her whereabouts, but nonetheless, she is a free woman. So now, on our first day back into so in society, Megami and I will be meeting once again, an event which we were both beginning to think would never happen. We won't be able to stay together long, even after being found not guilty. Megami still has responsibilities to the court, but for today, just seeing Megami a free woman would be enough. By the time I had arrived at the cemetery, Megami was already there. Kneeling on the ground and praying, Megami remained vi vigilant in front of of her older sister's graves. Of all places Megami could have gone to celebrate her freedom, she chose to visit Hitomi's grave. Even if Megami has decided to stop living in her deceased sister's shadow, I guess Hitomi will always be a part of Megami, whether she likes it or not. Yes, Hitomi. Despite the brave face she had initially been wearing, Megami show, soon showed her true feelings. Disregarding Discarding the facade on the always energetic, smiling, happy-go-lucky schoolgirl, Megami, Megami let the tears stream down her face without hesitation, allowing her tears to fall freely onto her sister's grave. Megami. 
Taking Megami in my arms, I held her tight, wishing I had the power to put her an end to her tears. Although she jumped back slightly at the sudden embrace, Megami immediately realized who was holding her and returned to mourning. Ideki, she, my sister, she. Megami tried to speak, unable to form full sentences through her tears. She then wiped away the tears and, mu and mucus on her face, once trying once again to communicate. He tell me he has always been buried here, and yet I, if, until now, I never came to see her, not once. But when I was in custody, when I was in court, then they were accusing me of killing that man for revenge. I, I realized they were right. My sister, he told me, never deserved any of this. She was a soldier, kind and gentle. She wouldn't hurt a fly. But as for me, I... Megami's tears continued to flow, but her voice remained st steady. She had something she wanted to say, and she was going to say it. Even if it was a... <sighs> Through willpower alone. When a that man showed up, I killed him. I didn't injure him. I didn't maim him. I didn't warn him. The second I saw his face, I just lost it. Now that he's dead, gone, now that I can face my sister, I can think. I think I can put all that behind me. Even if they're both gone, I'm still here. We're still here. And from now until the day I die, as long as I have you beside me, that's all I ever, all I ever need. Oh my. That was that was a heart wrenching uh, arc. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this episode. Uh, I'll start the uh, Shiro arc next episode, and I'll hope to see you guys all again then.